This proves, this black swan proves that the earth is flat and not a globe. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Danny Faulkner from Answers in Genesis degenerately and deliberately misrepresented his opponent's position, then lied to the congregation at Calvary, Knoxville. Welcome to the show. This is Dr. Danny Faulkner from Answers in Genesis giving a presentation to a church, Calvary, Knoxville. I have yet, I've done this several times, and I have yet to get the results the flat earthers get. I suspect many of them get the results I get, and they just simply ignore those, and they, they select out the data that they want to, to champion because it agrees with what they've chosen to believe. That is fundamentally dishonest. Fundamentally dishonest. Uh, Danny is then going to employ the same strategy in the very next breath that he feebly indicted, baselessly, flat earthers for doing. To do that. Okay, another example. Uh, this is one that people put up there all the time. This is uh, what they call the famous, famous um, a black swan. A guy, a flat earther in 2016, made this video. It's only 10 or 12, 15 minutes long. I've watched the video myself. That's not a video. This is an image. And everyone knows that. Let me put this over here. Sorry about that, folks. Danny just posted this image. He said it was a video. It's not a video, it's an image. It's an image that I got off of BMLS B69 bow from 2016. As we can notice here, there's a problem. It seems that Danny has misrepresented and chopped this photo up. Obviously, if you spent three seconds in this community, quote unquote, you know what this image looks like. It looks like that. It appears that Dr. Danny Faulkner from Answers in Genesis has cut this off. I wonder why. He sort of left out the bottom part. Observer's height equals one foot and max distance to the geometric horizon on a sphere is 1.22 miles. Why would you do that? Let's see. Several times, and he uh, positions his camera, tells a zoom camera out there on the, on the Southern California beach, six feet above the water. Six feet above the water. Uh, no, Danny. It's one foot above the water. I don't think you watched the video. We're going to be playing that video here shortly. So you see what he did, folks? Misrepresented the image so he can state the lie. Do you think he's going to possibly misrepresent or lie again? He's got these two uh, platforms out there, uh, Hill House and Habitat. He gives the distance away, and he does the numbers, and he said, look, given my position, the horizon should be in front. No, he did not. He did not mention anything about the horizon in his video. Let's take a look. This is BMLSB 69's video from 2016, which I captured the image off of to make the black swan. As you can see, he said one foot elevation. Hmm. That's telling me you didn't watch this video, Danny. Make sure. Here we go. I don't know, Danny, does that look like six foot elevation? My word. This is the image I captured. All I did was enhance the contrast, as I'll show you here, Enhance the contrast to bring the horizon 
that is behind the oil rigs out in a little bit more detail. And this is what he stated. At 9.41 miles, the line of sight that is loss of visibility due to the Earth's curvature at one foot elevation, Danny, is 44.57 feet. He mentioned nothing about the horizon. Back to you, Danny. Of those two oil, oil platforms, obviously the horizon's behind them. <laughs> yes, it is. That's a problem. Because platform habitat is 9.41 miles away. The horizon is clearly behind platform habitat. We say at a safe distance of 10 miles, even though it's much further, I have an inkling on how far it is, but we can safely say reasonably that the horizon is 10 miles away. What problems does that promote to the Baltard? Well, according to Pythagorean formula, an observer at one foot with a horizon at 10 miles puts the radius of the Earth at 264,000 miles, Danny, making the circumference of your Baltard Earth 1,658,761 miles. That's why Bye Bye Ball is up here, Danny. So, Bye Bye Ball, they say, because. No, bye bye ball, and they don't say it. I said it. This is my writing. This is my image. This proves, this black swan proves that the Earth is flat and not a globe. That's correct. It's, glo it's not a globe. Most definitely for sure, unless your globe has a radius of 264,000 miles and a circumference of 1,658,000 761 miles. Now I want you to look at that that platform on the left. You see that derrick going up like the derrick, the the derrick going up. Uh, the black swan argument is let's take a look at the platform at the derrick. That's not a derrick either. It's a crane boom. That's not the black swan argument, Danny. This is the black swan argument. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. Let's say, see if there's any derricks in here, you derelict. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles P, then every horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. Not Q, because the horizon distance is greater than 9.41 miles Therefore, not P. The Earth is not a sphere. I don't know. I didn't see any derricks in here, you derelict. Like that? What do you notice about it? It's kind of wavy, isn't it? Do you think the derrick really looks like that? So you're going for a wavy derrick in this argument? This is a red herring fallacy diversion, people. Misrepresentation. From an alleged intellectual, a professional. No, in fact, this is what the Derrick looks like. Really? It's pretty straight, isn't it? Isn't it? Not a Derrick derelict. And hmm, this is interesting. So what's the big deal about this photo there, Danny Faulkner? Uh, and by the way, while you're looking at it, what do you notice about the the horizon <laughs> uh i noticed that it's 6.21 miles away from a one foot observer height that's what i notice sort of like this photo that was in the original black swan presentation in on january 1st 2020 you know what the problem is with this one danny let me show you Guess what this is, Baltards? It's another black swan. You see, how far away is the horizon here, Rhodes Scholars? Yeah? Danny, that horizon is 6.21 miles away, roughly. 
Do you know what the radius would be if the horizon is at 6.21 miles with the observer height at one foot? According to Pythagorean formula, it would be 101,798 miles with a circumference of 639,616 miles, Danny. You just posted another black swan unwittingly. Thanks, by the way. The one on the right is partially obscured, just as you expect, and the one on the left... Just as we would expect. What? On a, on an Earth with a circumference of 639,616 miles, Danny? You think you're overshooting a bit? Left, it's even more obscured because it's farther away, just as you expect if the Earth is a globe. Earth is a globe! Globe! Really? A globe with a circumference of 639,616 miles. Two different pictures showing you two something very different. Two different pictures showing you two something very different. Aren't you? Aren't you? You English much, Danny? Well, I would submit to you that the one on the left, the upper left, was taken at a time when there was a temperature inversion present. When Temperature inversion? What does that have to do with the black swan argument and seeing the horizon in this photo? Are you making stuff up again? Can you put temperature in a jar and paint it red? What does temperature inversion have to do with the horizon being 10 miles out when it should be 1.22 miles out? Of course, you drop that part because you, you chopped the language off my image when refraction was there and refraction refraction was there can be quite variable and in fact the fact that you see that wavy derrick there that crane that's evidence of extreme refraction going refraction of the crane i don't think so danny you know as soon as you mention or begak refraction you relinquish all globe earth geometry of course you didn't know that did you you just mindlessly parroted from something you heard on the internet yeah this has nothing to do whatsoever to do with the black swan photo their fairy tale atmosphere which is a paradox in terms atmo means air air is a gas sphere is a shape gases have no inherent shape if you would have said if you would have said purple tutued unicorns, it would have had the same effect. You know why? Because you don't know what refraction is. From your alma mater wiki, Snell's Law, also known as Snell Descartes Law, and the Law of Refraction, Danny. This is a formula used to describe the relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction. When referring to light or other waves, passing through a boundary between, uh-oh, two different isotropic media, Danny, such as water, glass, or air. Here's the formula and a depiction. As you can see, and as the definition identified, Danny, that you must have two different isotropic media. In this example, you have air and water with a boundary or surface. Gases have no boundaries or surface in the Atmo. As you can see here by the formula, N subscript I sine theta I equals N subscript R sine theta R. Well, what is NI? Well, that's re the refractive index of air compared to the refractive index of water, NR. You have to have two, or the formula is nonsensical. As you can see here in practical application, just refer to the depiction. What do we have here? Well, we have Snell's Law in action. We have air and water, and then what do we have between the two? Well, for refraction, we must have a surface. That's right in the middle. Just like the definition says, Danny. How do you get this in your fairy tale atmo? You don't. 
You only have one media. Gas. From the physicsclassroom.com. Refraction is the bending of a path of a light wave as it passes from, here we go again, one material to another material, Danny. The refraction occurs at the boundary. There are no boundaries in gases. And it is caused by a change in the speed of a light wave upon crossing that boundary. The tendency of a ray of light to bend in one direction or another is dependent upon whether the light wave speeds up or slows down upon what? Crossing the boundary between two substances, Danny. In their example, air and water. And the boundary between the two. Where are your boundaries in your Atmo? You only have one media. From hyperphysics, Georgia State University. Refraction is the bending of a wave when it enters a medium where its speed is different. The refraction of light when it passes from a fast medium to a slow medium bends the light ray toward the normal to the boundary. What boundary? You know how many boundaries in the Atmo? It's just one media, gas. It bends the light ray toward the normal to the boundary between the two media, Danny. The amount of bending depends on the indices of refraction, like I showed above, of the two media. And is described quantitatively by Snell's law. Going on, but the one below the lower right, I don't see any of that. The, one, the picture on the lower right is consistent with the Earth being a globe, 25,000 miles circumference. The one Negative. It's consistent with being a globe with a circumference of 639,616 miles, Danny. You're either geometrically illiterate or a liar. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Danny Faulkner from Answers in Genesis degenerately and deliberately misrepresented his opponent's position then lied to the congregation at Calvary, Knoxville.